Hey folks, Nick Colbertson here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a sampler instrument in Logic, plus at the end I'll go over some audio kit configuration tips. Audio kit is an open source project for creating really cool audio apps. If you just want to use the instrument in Logic, you can skip over that part, but there's enough crossover of context that I put it all in one video. I also made a video showing how to make instruments in GarageBand using AU Sampler, so you can check that out too if you'd like. But enough about that, let's get started. First, we'll open up Logic and create a new project. Choose a software instrument, and there are a couple of ways to access the sampler. One way is to click the arrows beside the instrument in the mixer and navigate to Sampler, Multi-Sampler Stereo. Here's our sampler view loaded with a default sine wave. A more convenient way to create a sampler instrument is to drag your audio files into the track list and select Sampler Zone Per Note. Quick note, if you're creating this instrument for use with AudioKit, first add the audio files to your Xcode project and then import it into Logic from there. The audio file I've imported has 10 total notes with two notes per octave on C and F sharp. You can see the sampler has already separated the notes for each key zone and mapped the root note to the keyboard. You could do this with drum samples, guitar sounds, or any instrument. There are several options for the kinds of sounds that you can import for your instrument. Here I'm importing multiple sounds to create an instrument. But you could just as easily use a single sound to create an instrument or a single audio track with several different slices for the different notes. Let's go over what all the sampler sections do. The synth section up here near the top has some low pass filters and even more controls if you click on the details button. Let's toggle on the low pass filter and adjust the cutoff to see how it affects the sound. The next section is the mod matrix where you can set up connections between envelopes, filters, LFOs, and MIDI events. Next we have our modulators where you can do things like change the envelopes attack and release. And here on the bottom, we have our note mapping and zones. Since this instrument is made up of short square waves, I want the sounds to loop. To do that, I'll select the zone and change the mode to looping forward. When I play the note now, you might hear clipping between the loop points. To fix that, you can alter the loop start and end points or adjust the fade out and crossfade values. Side note for audio kit users, the fade out and crossfade parameters will be ignored when running the EXS file in your application. You can try adjusting the loop points with the yellow looping markers, or you can go to Edit, Optimize Loop Start, then select Edit, Optimize Loop End. And for some reason, I found selecting Optimize Loop Start for a final time produces the best result. Next, I'll go in and do the same procedure to the other zones, making sure that no pops are produced at the looping points. There may be a faster way to do this, but this is how I roll. I forgot to mention you can also click on these zoom controls to get a better look at your waveform. And notice when I play the note, the player starts to the left, then loops between the encapsulated loop points. Now let's hear how it sounds with the envelope's attack and release increased. Since the release was increased, the note will continue to loop even after we let off the key. Next, let's try adding a new connection to our mod matrix. Let's have our note's velocity adjust the filter's cutoff value. Set the amount we want to alter the parameter and adjust the cutoff's initial value. And now you'll see a red line around the cutoff knob and that denotes the range in values. I'll also slightly increase the resonance for now so that you can hear the effect more pronounced. Down on our mapping keyboard, you can hear how the key's MIDI note velocity is adjusting the filter's cutoff. Now I'll turn the resonance back down and you can hopefully hear how this modification makes a single sample sound more dynamic. Once you get the sound just how you like it, it's time to save our EXS sampler instrument. Go to the sampler menu and select Save As. Notice this Save with Audio Data checkbox. With this setting toggled on, Logic will make a duplicate of your audio files in their file directory, and it will also update the file path to those sounds. If you're only planning on using this instrument in Logic, then it is fine to have that box checked. As a matter of fact, you should probably have that box checked, unless you have these sounds somewhere else on your computer and you are gonna have them there forever. If you're saving this instrument for use in AudioKit, leave this box unchecked and save the EXS instrument directly to your application. More on that later. Now we'll save our sampler instrument. And next, click on the bottom left Save button in Logic to save our instrument to our user patches. 
As an optional step, you can add effects to your sounds to give it more personality. Here I'm adding a lo-fi tape effect from a third-party plugin. Now back in our sampler view, I want to show you some really cool and easy ways to pull up some preset parameters for your sound. Go up to the sampler menu and select a synth factory preset. Here I'm selecting the JP8 square lead. After loading a preset, you'll notice that the mod matrix is filled with various new connections. Now, if you're planning on using these sounds in audio kit, you can't legally use their samples. Apple owns these samples, although JP is like the Jupiter 8, so maybe they have a deal with Roland, I don't know. But what you can do is click on this gear on the top right hand corner and there's an option to import mapping data without synth parameters. We'll select the EXS file we created earlier and now we have our sounds being augmented by the presets controls. This might be a really cool way to experiment with creating instruments. Here's another one that uses a glide value to shift the pitch between notes. Remember to re-import your EXS sound map and let's hear how that sounds. That's the same samples, but just using different connections. Now we'll save this as a new sampler EXS file and we'll save the instrument to our user patches. So here's our first instrument. And our second one. Now finally, when you go to save your project, there's another toggle box to copy sampler audio data. Once again, uncheck this box if you're using this with AudioKit, but if you're just using the sounds in Logic, you can check the box and Logic will keep track of the sounds for you. And that's how you create a sampler instrument in Logic. For the remainder of the video, I'm just gonna talk about the configuration for AudioKit. So if you don't care about that stuff, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Come over to my channel, watch some more videos. Thank you, I love you, bye. All right, now back to the audio kit stuff. In case you haven't seen it yet, I posted another video on my channel about making an instrument app with audio kit. That should be a good starting point for getting all this to work. When I first started making instruments, I was trying to just create them directly into the cookbook to get it working before creating my own application and doing it separately. But when it comes time to set up your own application, here are some steps to take. The best way to show this is just to create a new project and show you how I would add the sounds. And I'm basing this on the way that the sounds are added in the cookbook, and I'll show that at the end as well. So I'm creating a new project in Xcode and then I want to create a folder called sounds and drag it into my project. Now inside this sounds folder, I'm gonna add my sounds. And now whenever I'm creating my instrument in Logic, I'm gonna drag this sound directly from my application into Logic. So just as before, I'm gonna create a sampler instrument with this sound. And now when it's time to save this file, I'm going to save it into that sounds folder of my application. And since I've already added this sounds folder to my project, all the files that go inside of it are also going to go to the same target as the folder, meaning they're getting added to the project too. So why the added step of having a sounds folder? Well, if you look at Apple's documentation, you'll see for referencing files, if the audio file is found in the original path, it is loaded. So normally we're gonna have it loaded from the right path and we should be all good. But in the second point, if the audio file is not found, the AU sampler looks to see if the path includes a portion that matches sounds, sampler files, or Apple loops. So by putting our sounds into this sounds folder, it is sort of a safety net. So in case you ever have to duplicate your project or move it somewhere else on your computer, hopefully it can find those sounds. What I would suggest doing is whenever you're first creating your project, put it somewhere, you're never gonna move it. You're gonna bury your project right there. Never move it then you won't have to worry about all this path stuff in the future. I've also found that sometimes if I copy and paste my project into another folder, it tends to help the paths, but if I drag that file from another folder, it doesn't update the path, so there's definitely some witchcraft going on here, but if you follow these steps, you should be all right, maybe.
No, you will. The Apple Sampler and Audio Kit can also load AU preset files. In my other video, I showed how to create AU preset files in GarageBand. You can also do these in Logic using the AU Sampler. The feature set of the AU Sampler is very limited compared to the regular sampler in Logic, but it does spit out a file that is an AU preset that is just a big text file, and you might want to use that format if you have trouble just exporting the EXS files. Another cool thing with AU preset files is you can can actually use the AU sampler to open up an EXS file and then re-export it as an AU preset. And finally, let's look at the Audio Kit Cookbook application. Here you can see they have that same sounds folder inside, and they also have a place to store all their sampler instruments. So you could do this as well if you want to have these encapsulated somewhere inside of your sounds folder. Usually I feel like for best practices, if you don't know how to do something, just look at the cookbook application and kind of follow their design principles. Why did they do it? I don't know, just do what they do. All right, and this is the, the second end. This is the real end. Thanks for watching the video. Like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any problems with stuff or if you do have problems, you could also look at the documentation and I'll also link up a good forum post on this topic about getting the sounds to load properly. I just talked a lot. Thanks for watching. See you next time.